enough stalling. The heading is polynomial operations, and in numbers we know what operations are, right? Operations are things which can put numbers together, you get a new number out at the end. Polynomial operations are just the same, except instead of the building block being numbers, we're now dealing with entire polynomials and getting them to interact with each other. Okay? Now, just like with numbers, there are four key operations that we can do with polynomials. I'll start you off. We can add them. So what does addition of these polynomials look like? Well, if you say p of x plus q of x, then we can simply go term by term. We can collect like terms, because as you notice, there's a couple here that I can deal with. And you get a new polynomial, polynomial at the other end. So for example, you can see that there are only x squared terms in p. right? So I'm just going to write the x squared term there. There are x terms in both p and q. So when you collect like terms, what do you get? Minus, minus 2x, good. And then when you look at the constant terms, plus 1, minus 4, looks like we're going to end up with minus 3. OK, so I've added these two polynomials. No big dramas. Just like adding, I can do subtraction because these are inverse operations. So instead of doing 1 plus the other, I'm going to do 1 take away. No big dramas here. So again, I'm going to look at, this time, order matters. So I'm going to have to do the top one, take away the bottom one. x squared, it doesn't get subtracted. There are no other collecting like terms that happen. Here, minus 3x minus x. How many x's do I end up with? Minus 4. And then when I have a look at the constant term, it's 1 take away negative 4, which leaves me with plus 5. OK. Before we move on to um, the other operations, I want you to notice some things about the degrees here. Right? Uh, polynomials p and q, you can tell me what their degrees are pretty quickly. Right? The degree of p is 2. The degree of q is 1. And now I want you to look at the degrees of the sums and differences. Right? p plus q, what's its degree? 2. And uh, p minus q, its degree, also 2. So when you add, that was just, it was bordering on it, evacuation length there. Anyway, uh, when you add polynomials, you can see you end up with the degree that was highest out of your original functions. Does that make sense? Or polynomials, I should say. Okay, so no big deal. But it starts to get a little more complicated when we look at more interesting operations. So if I instead don't add or subtract but multiply these two, if I say p of x times q of x, I want you to make a prediction. What's going to happen to the degree? Well, you've got degree 2 times degree 1. And these are just, um, well, you're just going to do some index law stuff, right? So when you've got stuff which has a power of 2 and you multiply it by stuff which has a power of 1, what do you end up with? You get a power of 3. So the degree that I'm going to get here if you put together a quadratic and a linear function, you'll end up with a cubic of some kind. And we could work out what this is. It wouldn't take too long. Uh, I'm going to multiply everything by x. That gives me this. Like so. And then I'm going to multiply everything by negative 4. So that gives me, let's see here. Uh, minus. Oh, that's a plus. Did that look right? Did I expand? Get rid of my brackets, OK? You can see why I've written it in two lines like this. Can you see why? Uh, it just helps me identify all of my like terms. So there's x cubed. How many x squared terms? Minus 7. How many x's? 13. And then that constant term is just hanging out there on the end. OK? So as we predicted, because we know our index laws, the degree of our product of these two polynomials is the sum of the degrees of the two polynomials you started with. If I had a, uh, a quadratic and a cubic, you'd expect this thing down here to have a degree of 5. That would be a quintic, okay? not that they come up very often. Okay? Addition, subtraction, multiplication. I've left the last one because it's the hardest, and it's actually what we're going to devote some energy into, division. Okay? Now, the tricky thing with this is, if you add two polynomials, you'll get another polynomial. If you subtract two polynomials, you'll get another polynomial. If you multiply two polynomials, you get the idea. But if you divide two polynomials, you may not 
get a polynomial. Okay? Uh, don't write this down, I just want to give it to you as a, a point of illustration. If I gave you an easy one, like say this, because um, you guys know my fondness for this particular polynomial. If I looked at that numerator as a particular polynomial and this numerator as a, this denominator as a particular polynomial, you can see here that the answer would be another polynomial. What would it be? It'd be x plus 3. It's worth noting that these two things are not identical, right? Because there's a domain restriction on this that doesn't exist over here, but it's still fine noting that domain restriction. There's nothing wrong with polynomials having domain restrictions. Um, you get another polynomial at the end. But if you have a look at the p and q that I've given you, you can see that th this is not going to fall out nice and neatly, is it? In fact, I've given you one up here which you pretty much... Can you even factorize that? B squared minus one. B squared. Yeah, you can, you can use... You're going to have to go to thirds, aren't you? Okay? But x minus 4 is not going to be one of those factors. So what am I going to do with this? Okay? I want you to make a separate subhead subheading because this is such a big deal, which is long division. 